Good morning, America. Resign and replace the White House shakeup. President Trump praising the new guy, John Kelly. John Kelly will do a fantastic job. As Reince Priebus now speaks out, what he's saying about his departure as chief of staff, the new power shift in the West Wing, and the promise of more changes to come. Missile launch, North Korea's latest test traveling higher and longer than last time. Raising concerns here about possible new targets. We're talking Seattle, Denver, Chicago, maybe even as far as New York and Washington, D.C. What are President Trump's options? Outer Banks exodus, mandatory evacuations on North Carolina's Hatteras and Ocracoke Islands. The power outage pulling the plug on summer plans and the new efforts to get the power back on this morning. And ride of terror, survivors speaking out about the deadly accident at the Ohio State Fair. That was terrifying. The fireball ride breaking apart, the chaotic moments that followed. There was a gentleman helping me and we put her down onto the ground and um, I was checking for a pause. The new legal action this morning. Live from ABC News in New York, this is Good Morning America. Good Saturday morning, everyone. Dan, as you can see, has the morning off. I don't know what we owe this honor to, but we are so <laughs> glad to have our chief White House correspondent, Woo! John Carlin, in the house. Yeah. yeah. A little bit, just as friendly, right? Yeah, yeah. We're so glad you're here. We've been waiting for this moment for a long time. I love the tie, by the way. Dan never wears colorful ties. John, it's great to have you. Great to uh, be here. We are going to begin uh, this morning with the White House shakeup. President Trump's chief of staff, Reince Priebus, resigns and is replaced by Homeland Security Secretary John Kelly, a four-star general. It has been six months of chaos in the West Wing. Not just Priebus, before that, Press Secretary Sean Spicer gone. Communications Director gone. The Deputy Chief of Staff gone. The National Security Advisor gone. Oh, we're not done. The FBI Director James Comey also gone. All of this has happened in just six months. And now the President is turning to a trusted former general to impose order in his White House. The big question, though, can this change effectively reset the administration? And what is Reince Priebus saying about all of this? ABC's David Wright begins our coverage at the White House for us this morning. David, good morning to you. Good morning, Paula and John. The president is clearly hoping that this shakeup is going to bring some order and discipline to a White House that has been riven by, by division and backbiting, chaos that comes at a cost to the president's agenda. The scapegoat this week, outgoing Chief of Staff Reince Priebus, who left the White House last night. Priebus told Fox News he wouldn't comment on those scathing attacks from Communications Director Anthony Scaramucci. I'm not going to get into the, that, that subject. It's just it's getting in the mud, and I, I think the palace intrigue stuff is annoying, and, and I think it's a distraction. It takes away from the president's agenda. Um, I think what everyone needs to do is just focus on the president, to focus on the things that he wants to get done for the American people. The announcement, expected all week, came abruptly in a presidential tweet late Friday. The Priebus said he resigned Thursday. I think actually going a different direction, hitting a reset button is a good thing. And the president did that. And so I think he's happy. I, I got to tell you, although it's always a little mix when things like this happen, I generally feel pretty good. Reince Priebus, a good man. Priebus's replacement starts Monday. A retired four-star general from the Marine Corps who, in his current role as Secretary of Homeland Security, was a steadfast supporter of the president's plan to strengthen America's borders. The uh, president, as we all know, has issued three executive orders related to our Homeland Security mission. These orders will secure our borders, enhance the enforcement of our immigration laws, and keep our citizens safe. General Kelly has been a star, done an incredible job thus far, respected by everybody. General John Kelly is well-liked in the West Wing with a proven record at command. His new unit badly in need of some discipline. But Kelly has no prior political experience, which could make it tough when it comes to issues like health care. The White House is still reeling over the Senate's failure to pass an Obamacare repeal, a signature campaign promise defeated with a thumbs down from Senator John McCain. A crushing blow to the GOP leadership. 
Well, the new chief of staff, as we said, starts Monday. In the meantime, the number two over at Homeland Security, Elaine Duke, she'll take over as acting secretary. But there's been some talk of the possibility of Attorney General Jeff Sessions eventually heading over to Homeland Security. That would uh, be news to the Department of Justice, however, and it would certainly raise some eyebrows here in Washington. That, Paula? Would, that would definitely be um, intriguing. David, before we let you go, I've got to ask you about the president. He uh, raised some eyebrows with this comment during a speech yesterday to law enforcement. He was referencing cracking down on suspected gang members. Let's take a listen. Like when you guys put somebody in the car and you're protecting their head, you know, the way you put their hand over. Like, don't hit their head and they've just killed somebody, don't hit their head. I said, you can take the hand away, okay? Okay, so David, the president uh, taking a lot of heat for that comment. Can you give us a little context? Well, he was speaking to local law and officers and he seemed to be suggesting that a little police brutality is not necessarily a bad thing joking that at least and there was immediate pushback from the suffolk county police department for one they are among the groups that he was addressing and they tweeted out immediately that uh, as a department we do not tolerate the roughing up of prisoners paula john yeah, yeah regardless of whether or not they're gang members all right david wright thanks for your reporting from the white house and speaking of the white house john yep. We're usually talking to you via satellite in yeah. D.C. Uh, I want to pick your brain. You've been covering Washington for the better part of two decades. Reince really was never a great fit for this administration, but overnight taking the high road, saying this is a reset, a much-needed reset for the administration. Do you think bringing in a four-star general is actually going to restore order and get this administration back on the right path? Well, well look, the problem in the Trump White House is that there is a chief of staff, and his name is Donald Trump. Donald Trump acts as his own chief of staff. He acts as his own communications director. Nobody really reported to Reince Priebus. The senior staff in the White House had direct line to the president. That's the way he liked it. My question is, what kind of authority is General Kelly going to have? Yeah, that's it. Well, he certainly has the respect of the president. Absolutely. So maybe that is step one. All right. Thanks for your analysis. Don't hey, go anywhere you know, for a while. I'll stick around for yeah. a while. Um, we want to bring in ABC News political analyst Koki Roberts from the nation's capital. Uh, good morning to you, Koki. Good morning, Paula and John. We're missing you down here. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go back anytime soon, okay? Um, I, you know, I wanted to be away from the chaos, so I came to Weekend <laughs> right. GMA. New okay? York is always the place to be <laughs> yeah. for that. We said if he could handle uh, six months of chaos in Washington, he could, he could definitely handle Weekend GMA. So, um, Koke, just ask John about this, but with I want to get your take on it. With Priebus being replaced by Kelly, do you anticipate that there will be less chaos in the administration? No, I agree completely with John. Uh, the, the problem is not the chief of staff. Uh, the problem is the president, and, and nobody can stop him from tweeting whatever he wants to tweet at all hours of the day and night, and whether that uh, contradicts some policy that the White House is trying to put out, uh, is the president doesn't seem Thank to care you. about. But in addition to that, um, we have not had good experiences with generals as chiefs of state. Uh, the last one was General Alexander Haig. And that was pretty chaotic. And uh, by the time Jerry Ford became president and inherited him as chief of staff, it didn't work at all because President Ford did not want that kind of chaos in the White House. And it lasted just about a month. But, Koki, Republican leaders practically begged President Trump to name Priebus at the beginning of this administration, saying he needed a Washington hand, somebody with, you know, contacts with, with Congress. Somebody who was a Republican. <laughs> now, who, we're, Republican. now we're at the now, point. Now you've got a general. He's got, you know. There, there are no Republicans in the White House. Uh, maybe Don McCann, the, the lawyer. But uh, there really aren't. Um, you know, last year at this time, we were at the Republican convention saying this is not a Republican convention. This is a Trump convention. Now we have a Trump White House. Uh, it is going to be heavily New York, heavily uh, his administration. He loves what he calls my generals. Uh, but it is not Republicans. These are not people who have been in the party, have been uh, working in the vineyards for years, have helped elect the people who are in Congress, all of those things. And so um, does that make the relationships mm -hmm. with Congress any better? I don't think so. Speaking of the relationships with Congress, you know, we were talking about this earlier off camera, seems to be several factions, the Republicans, the Democrats, and then you've got the Trump administration. The fact and within that, that, a few different factions. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, do, do you anticipate that making the president's agenda tough to actually go forward? It's already tough. Uh, and, you know, the health care is just the most uh, obvious of the agenda items. Um, now, uh, General Kelly has been very supportive of the wall, uh, which is something that uh, President Trump really 
got out there and ran on last year. Uh, but the people in the House are ready to put in a little money to build a wall. That's going to run up against a wall, so mm -hmm. to speak, in the Senate. And that's what's going to keep happening. You know, the, the Senate is very evenly divided, and they, they had, members of the Senate did not run on the same issues that the president ran on. All right, Koki, it's always great to have you on a Saturday. Good to be Sunday with you. morning. We'll take you whenever we can get you, all right, Koki? Always nice to be here. Thanks, Koki. We want to move now to the other big story this morning, the latest move by North Korea involving another intercontinental ballistic missile. Kim Jong-un claims they are now able to hit the entire United States at any time. ABC's Gloria Rivera is in Washington with more on the launch and how the United States is responding. Good morning, Gloria. Good morning, John. Good morning, Paula. North Korea delivering on its promise, ignoring multiple warnings from the U.S. and going ahead with its 11th missile test this year alone. We are learning more about the launch site, which came as somewhat of a surprise. Mupyongni is a mountainous region near China where the regime is believed to hide numerous missiles in underground tunnels. Blasting off a launch pad near the Chinese border, this North Korean missile for the first time appearing capable of reaching across the continental U.S. North Korea later releasing photos claiming to show leader Kim Jong-un posing next to what it says is a Hwasong-14 missile. North Koreans have a missile that can hit the lower 48, but now we're talking Seattle, Denver, Chicago, maybe even as far as New York and Washington, D.C. Moments after learning of this alarming development, the president on a conference call with his national security team. In a statement, the president condemned the launch, calling it reckless and dangerous, saying the United States will take all necessary steps to ensure the security of the American homeland and protect our allies in the region. The United States is also advancing its capabilities with what are called ground-based interceptors and intercept these North Korean missiles before they could reach land. The intercontinental ballistic missile went higher and flew longer than this powerful July 4th test. It was airborne for about 45 minutes, shooting approximately 2,300 miles into space before coming down in the Sea of Japan, 620 miles from its launch site. But the North Koreans can lower the angle of that trajectory to vastly extend the range, potentially all the way to the east coast of the U.S. This latest test did not demonstrate whether North Korea can successfully arm the missile with a nuclear warhead. But just this week, the Defense Intelligence Agency predicted that could happen within the year. In response, the U.S. staged a joint military exercise with South Korea. But some experts say only getting back to the negotiation table will help. Military threats or bluster w won't stop them. It's time for the President of the United States, the great deal maker, to see if he can make a deal. North Korea media is reporting that the leader Kim Jong-un vows he will continue these tests targeting the U.S. The president of the United States' closest ally in the region, South Korea, wants to talk with the United States about deploying more anti-missile defense units in the region and tougher sanctions from the U.N. John, Paula. Thank you, Gloria. And now a power outage is messing up vacation plans in the Outer Banks. Vacationers have been ordered to get out or face legal action, and ABC's Ariel Resha brings us the story. Good morning to you, Ariel. Ruining a lot of vacationers. Certainly is, John and Paula. That outage prompting the governor of North Carolina to declare a state of emergency. Visitors on one island warn they'll be breaking the law if they don't evacuate. This morning, a summer vacation nightmare. We had another day left. We wanted to be on the beach fishing. A power outage forcing at least 10,000 tourists off the Outer Banks. Uh, hung out by candlelight, and uh, we're hoping that any minute the power would come back on. The outage prompting an evacuation order on the North Carolina islands of Hatteras and Ocracoke, with no word on when power will be restored. Officials presiding over popular tourist spot Ocracoke Island threatening misdemeanor charges for visitors who do not heed warnings to leave. It seems like they're trying to get off expeditiously as we requested. The blackout began on Thursday after a construction company working on this new bridge drove a steel casing into an electric transmission cable. Yeah, it's kind of a damper on our fund to cut short our family vacation. Despite bringing in backup generators to power the communities, the emergency services department is asking people as they prepare to leave to turn off their AC and conserve electricity. And those generators are now providing electricity for essential services like EMS and fire. Crews now working around the clock to get that power back up and running. But guys, officials say it could be days, if not weeks, until the power is fully restored in the area. Yeah, that's a tough pill to swallow if you plan on vacationing in the, in the Outer Banks, which so many are 
doing right now. Certainly bad for business there as sure. well. Sure. All right, Ariel, great to have you. Good to be here. And we want to move now to large parts of the country that are facing dangerous weather from Alabama all the way up to New Jersey. Major downpours are triggering flash fl flooding. Rob is here with the latest. And John, you got out of D.C. just in time. They got hammered yesterday with heavy rain. This is an unusual storm for late July. You almost, almost see this comma shape, something we'd see maybe in September or October. And heavy rain has come along with this. Multiple reports of four and five inches of rainfall. We had a flash flood emergency in Washington County, uh, Pennsylvania, south of uh, Pittsburgh. You see this area kind of back building. And so that's going to be troublesome for parts of West Virginia as well. This flash flood watch is in effect for many places right through midday. For more on this storm, what it's doing, what it has done and what it's doing now, now let's get to Eva Pilgrim, who's in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. Good morning, Eva. Rob, it's been raining pretty much non-stop here in Delaware. We're in a little bit of a lull right now, but you can see this wind has a pretty good push to it. This area just can't seem to catch a break this week. And now flood warnings for this area, at least through midday. Dangerous storms up and down the East Coast, flooding streets, turning deadly. Tens of millions in the Mid-Atlantic affected by the powerful system. A thousand homes in Virginia left in the dark by a toppled tree. In Pennsylvania, heavy rain overnight coming on top of several inches of rain earlier in the day. The sudden floodwaters trapping this man on high ground, making this road impassable. But I, I come out and car started floating a little bit. It, it just come up that fast. Washington, D.C. streets submerged, swollen with rainwater. Drivers turning around after police shut down roads. Hail pelting parked cars in Maryland. Drivers barely able to see in front of them. Further south in Kentucky, residents in this neighborhood waking up to a street turned river. And in Florida, a lightning strike on the beach, killing one man and injuring another. They were just sitting on the beach, you know, and lightning came in quick. And the wind really picking up out here again. Another major concern with this storm, are, it brings a high risk for rip currents. You can look out here and see just how angry the ocean right now is. They're expecting that the waves will break anywhere from five to seven feet at least through today. Rob? All right, Eva, certainly some high surf back behind you. Those high winds are, again, reminiscent of a, a nor'easter almost if in September, October. It's a coastal low that's developing. It'll scoot out to sea relatively quickly, but, again, across Virginia and down across North Carolina might see another batch of rain that could be heavy at times during the day today. So another two to three inches potentially in this area that's already saturated, so flooding still an issue at least through the end of today. This front, by the way, gets down south into the Gulf of Mexico. That doesn't happen usually until late September. So folks who live in New Orleans, Baton Rouge, Lake Charles, Mobile, Alabama. Not going to be much cooler, but it will feel drier, less humidity. So enjoy that. That's a treat for this time of year. Meanwhile, the monsoon continues out west with heavy showers potentially across parts of uh, Arizona, New Mexico, and Colorado. That's a quick check on what's going on nationally. Here now is your local forecast. Waking up this morning to a break from the rain in the D.C. area. Here's a look at some warnings still in effect, though. Parts of Montgomery County and Prince George's County until 730. A flood warning is in effect through lunchtime today. The D.C. Metro under a flood warning as well. It's the western regions where we turn our attention through the uh, early half of this morning and through this afternoon. An additional two to three inches will be possible near the Winchester area. So watch for water on roadways. Carl effect. Yeah, it is the Carl effect, and we yeah. we were pushing to have John Carl live for us in the D.C. area yesterday during all that heavy rain. With the but rain, well, you saw the president with the umbrella. Uh -huh. I mean, I think it's the first time we've seen a, a chief of staff fired in the pouring rain. <laughs> you know, all sorts of uh, new presidents. <laughs> was the president yeah. holding his own umbrella too? It sure looked that way. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. was supposed to happen. Hey, you know, he's a take charge kind of guy. <laughs> he's certainly, you know, I know another take charge kind of guy. This is a transition. Yeah. This is a transition, yes. Thank you, Ryan, right, to me. Thank you for teeing me up. Yeah. Pump, set, spike. All right. Uh, good morning to good you, morning. Paula and John. Adrian, Robert, good morning to you. Welcome back, sir. Thanks, uh, good morning, everyone. We're going to begin with breaking news this morning out of the West Bank, the Middle East. A spokesman for Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas uh, says that he has been hospitalized to undergo a routine checkup at a hospital in the city of Ramallah. The 82-year-old has had heart problems in the past, including an emergency heart procedure. That was a year ago. The spokesman says that Abbas is expected to be released later today. And back here in the U.S., the White House says that the president, President Trump, will sign new economic sanctions against Russia, along with uh, North Korea and Iran. Uh, Congress overwhelmingly pal passing the new legislation after Russia's alleged uh, meddling in the presidential election last year. The Kremlin 
already retaliating by seizing two U.S. diplomatic compounds in Moscow and ordering the American embassy there to reduce its staff by hundreds of people. And overseas...